Hi everyone, thanks for tuning into this latest climate update and outlook through February 2020. This is Alex Tardy, meteorologist at National Weather Service. On your screen is some of the impacts so far this year as we've started out the water year very wet. We'll discuss this and more. Here's what it looks like so far across the west. You can clearly see there is a signal of drier and much drier than average compared to normal precipitation for the water year over central and northern California. With southern California, though it's starting to erode, still in the green and blue shaded as we started off very wet. Temperature wise, not much signal. We've had a mixture of warm events early on in the year from Santa Ana winds and then a mixture of some cold events in the precipitation events and episodes of December and January. So overall, right about normal to a little bit above for most of California. Now, if you look at California specifically for precipitation, starting with the beginning of the water year, October 1st, remember the only precipitation we saw started in late November right before Thanksgiving. So the precipitation still remains above normal across Southwest California. Some areas 100 to 200% of normal, but we are now starting to see that erode quickly with drier than average conditions in January. Now, often I get a lot of questions about, well, you said it was going to be dry this month or this week, but it rained. Well, this is exactly what we mean. The prediction for January 2020 was drier than average and it is more than coming to fruition, unfortunately. So January and February are usually our wettest months on average. So when you only see a little bit of precipitation, albeit it still rains and snows, you can fall well short of what the averages are. So, so far, Southern California is looking at below 25% of average. Those are very dry conditions so far for the month of January with only about a week left. You can see it extends all the way up into Central and Northern California despite a little bit of precipitation, but well short of where it should be for the month of January. Now let's take a look at waterweather.gov, which is a little bit higher resolution data. And you can see that since the start of the water year, percent of average, most of our region is still running around 100 to close to 200 percent of average just because of that very wet start. Specific locations also tell the story about what we discussed. You can see San Diego and Ramona are still running well above average because those areas were really targeted early on with the storm track and the rain events. Our mountain areas, however, unfortunately, are rapidly dropping below average. You can see Big Bear, Idlewild, Palomar Mountain. Those areas are now, if they don't see any precipitation for January, going to end up a couple inches below average for the water year. Remember, the water year starts October 1st and runs all the way through to date. A lot of our water supply and precipitation is, is uh, focused on the Sierra Nevada the eight station index is shown here. All the wet years are on the top, the driest years down below. You can see a couple years ago, 2017 18 was very dry, and we are running neck and neck with that right now. And we are currently sitting at only 64% of average. Just a couple weeks ago, when we took a look at this, that value was the same. So, despite some precipitation in January, because we are well below average in January, we are not making any progress in this area. What is our weather pattern that caused the early wet start, especially for San Diego? Well, San Diego was right in the storm track. The upper level ridge of high pressure, this is not a semi-permanent feature. This varies from year to year, month to month, season to season. It is pushed recently since November 1st, well up into British Columbia, causing the storm track to dive south right towards San Diego. We often see this in La Nina years and even during the drought years, of 2014 to 16 where San Diego ends up getting the brunt of the storm track with these features coming directly from the north. They're not very good and beneficial for most of California however. And in some cases we saw tropical moisture emerge up from the south which has helped our local area here in southwest California. 
However, that was the past. Now, since January, since we started 2020, the storm track has shifted more to the north and become flatter, less amplified. Upper level high pressure has shifted further west to an area north of Hawaii. This has allowed cold air to drop down from western Canada and allowed for a more active storm track in far northern California and northern Utah and the Pacific Northwest, but not good for southern California. And that is why we have gone into this expected drier pattern for January 2020. In the Pacific Ocean, do we see any signals of El Nino or La Nina? The short answer is no. Uh, we do see some warming in the western equatorial Pacific Ocean as shown here in orange and red. Large area of warm above average water remains in the northern Pacific, the reflection of that upper level ridge that's been around really since May 2019. Overall, the Pacific Ocean remains much above average for ocean temperatures, but there is no El Nino or La Nina. What is the outlook now? Well, with that pattern change that we've seen set up in January, it looks like the storm track will be going mostly to our north, then diving instead of over San Diego, diving over Texas, as shown on the left. This takes us for late January into early February. This also results in warmer or milder than average conditions and less Arctic air going into most of the country, including our region here, which we should be drier and warmer than average as we round out to month of January into early February. Now, what about the long range outlook? Well, it doesn't look any better. It's looking a lot like what was predicted for January with the most confidence over central California. Remember, February and January are the wettest months on record. So when you see a signal of dry or warm over California, it doesn't mean there's no rain or snow expected. It just means you're likely to fall well short of what is normally a very wet January and February. So a continuation of what we've been seeing in January is the official prediction. When we look at computer model ensemble data, it also indicates that late January through early February, drier than average over Southern California and even Central California with an active storm track in the Pacific Northwest. And you can see that carries over into the first part of February with a very dry signal over Central and Southern California predicted by the ensemble of computer models. Here are the highlights I want you to remember. So since the start of the water year, which is October 1st, we saw 10 Santa Ana wind events. Some of those were strong, in particular December 16th, 17th was damaging strong. We saw six precipitation events. We basically saw um, the big one on Thanksgiving Day, November 28th, with lots of flooding impact from that and heavy, heavy snow, several feet in the mountains. And then we also saw December 26th, which was basically a carbon copy during the holiday weekend of Christmas. And we saw flooding, flash flooding, and significant several feet, one to three feet of snow in our mountains. Atmospheric rivers have been quiet this year so far. Um, they've been weak. We've also seen the focus of above average precipitation being San Diego County. But in January, that has changed. Dominant upper level high pressure. It's not a permanent feature. We're not talking about surface high pressure or tropical high pressures. We're talking about the storm track and it's been amplified and placed this fall. It was a concern when we made initial outlooks this fall as well. This amplified weather pattern has basically resulted in only three week precipitation events in California for January. Uh, just clipping Southern California. The upper level ridge has shifted, but it's not shifted in an area favorable for precipitation. It's actually shifted the jet stream northward of Southern California, well north. The oceans are not really a factor right now, but we are seeing very warm water conditions in the Pacific Ocean, especially in the Northern Pacific Ocean, but no official El Nino or La Nina, so we're calling it neutral conditions. We have seen some tropical moisture come up from the south, uh, even in January, but it's been relatively weak. Uh, prim primarily in January, we've seen cold air coming across the north, uh, but cold air doesn't necessarily lead to significant precipitation when you're that far away from the main storm track. Unfortunately, this is expected to continue in February with mild conditions. Um, it doesn't mean precipitation events will not happen, but they'll be infrequent 
and uh, they'll tend to be lighter than average overall. So warmer and drier conditions expected. But again, I want to emphasize that doesn't mean it won't rain and snow all the way through February. February is really one of our wettest months between January and March. And when you don't have a lot of precipitation events in January, February, you quickly fall either to average if you were above average or in this case below average even when you did start off the year wet. Please stay tuned for the latest information at Weather Echo of San Diego. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter for more of this information and the latest weather forecasts.